Napoleonic France dominated much of Europe for most of the Napoleonic Wars. However, that domination didn't go unchallenged. From assassination attempts to rebellions and uprisings, many resisted Napoleon's hold over Europe. As time went on and Napoleon struggled to maintain grip over the continent, that resistance only grew. The true number of assassination attempts on Napoleon is hard to determine, but the general consensus is that somewhere between 20 to 30 plots were made against the emperor. Most did not come anywhere close to succeeding, however. Of the plots that did come close, they were launched by a variety of groups and individuals. All, however, believed that by killing Napoleon, there was something to be gained. One of the earliest plots took place shortly after Napoleon was made first consul at the Chateau de Malmaison, which was owned by his wife, Josephine. Before Napoleon took up residence there, workers snuck in a poison snuff box and placed it on one of Napoleon's desks. The box was found, however, and after being inspected, was found to be poisoned. Other alleged plots that were supposedly planned at the chateau included a direct attack to kidnap Napoleon and planned attack while he was on the highway to Paris in an effort to kill him. Another plot took place on the 10th of October, 1800, where Napoleon would be attacked as he exited the opera in Paris. The attempt was half-hearted, however, as some of the members that were supposed to kill Napoleon didn't even bring weapons to the opera. He was easily stopped as the group had been infiltrated early on by French police under Fouché, and a trap had been set at the opera itself. The attempt might never have been made at all, however, if not for the involvement of the police, who urged on the plotters. Regardless of the willingness of the plotters, four would eventually be executed on January 30th, 1801. Of all the attempts on Napoleon's life, the plot of Rue saint Niquet's is likely the most famous. It took place on the 24th of December, 1800, as Napoleon was on his way to the opera, and was planned by royalists. A large bomb was placed into a carriage, and was supposed to be detonated as Napoleon's carriage passed by. The timing of the detonation was misjudged, however, and the bomb went off after Napoleon, asleep in his carriage, had already passed safely by. A number of innocent bystanders were killed by the blast, with many more being injured. Undeterred by the attack, Napoleon continued on to the opera, where he received a standing ovation from the audience who had learned of the blast. In the aftermath of the attack, Napoleon assumed that the plot was the work of Jacobins, and cracked down on them, despite evidence from his minister of police, Fouché, that the royalists were behind the bomb. 130 Jacobins were exiled from France, and several people uninvolved with the assassination attempt were executed. Eventually, most of those responsible for the plot were caught and executed, but not before most of the remaining Jacobins that could pose a threat to Napoleon were exiled or killed. It was not just Frenchmen who wanted to assassinate Napoleon. The British decided to financially support an assassination attempt in late 1803. Royalists exiled from France traveled from London back into France, but the plot did not progress far before its participants were caught. Despite the plot's failure, however, it still had major impacts as one of the people implicated in the plot was General Jean Moreau, a popular general at the time and a rival to Napoleon. Due to his popularity, he would be exiled to America instead of executed. However, instead of staying in America, Moreau would return to fight Napoleon, only to be fatally wounded in the Battle of Dresden in 1813. Other plotters were executed, including Bourbon Prince, the Duke of Ennine, who had nothing to do with the plot. His death alarmed nobility across Europe. The leader of the group did not escape death either. General Charles Piscrew committed suicide with his own tie before he could be executed. As Napoleon managed to strengthen his grip over power, assassination attempts grew less frequent, but one notable attempt did occur in 1809. Friedrich Stapps, on his own initiative, attempted to kill Napoleon using a knife. His plan was to get as close to the emperor as possible by claiming to present a petition. One of Napoleon's aides, General Rapp, however, grew suspicious of the young man, and he was arrested after his knife was discovered. Napoleon decided to talk to Stapps directly, and asked why he wanted to kill him. Stapps' reply was to say that Napoleon has caused great misery to the German people. He would go on to refuse Napoleon's offer of pardon, and was executed on October 17th, his final words reportedly being, Liberty forever, Germany forever, death to the tyrant. Stapp's attempt on Napoleon can in large part be attributed to the quickly growing sense of German nationalism that was taking root during the Napoleonic era. Others resisted the French and Napoleon by taking up arms. Spain was not the only place where the French faced revolts and rebellions against their control by the general populace. The earliest notable example that the French Empire faced began during the War of the Third Coalition. French troops invading Naples initially faced very little resistance, other than the Neapolitan army, which was quickly defeated. That would change, however, when French supplies stretched thin forced French troops to take supplies from the local population. Neapolitan troops had also taken supplies from the locals in the Calabrian region, leaving them with little for the French to take. 
nearly starving, an insurrection quickly began in March 1806. At first it consisted of small groups of partisans, likely just brigands as the region was known to have a large number of them, however it quickly grew into entire villages rising up against the French. Still short on supplies, and unable to receive reinforcements, French troops struggled to put down the insurrection. All other French forces were tied up, fighting at the final Neapolitan holdout at the fortress of Guita. French troops were therefore unable to put down the revolt. A small British expedition from Sicily was also sent to support the Neapolitans. Under the command of Sir John Stuart, it faced some initial success, even defeating a small French force. However, when the Neapolitans finally capitulated in Gita in July, French forces headed south and the British retreated to Sicily. Even with more French forces and a gradually improving supply situation, it took until the spring and summer of 1807 to finally suppress the insurrection for good. The determination and lengths the partisans went to to fight the French would foreshadow the French struggle in Spain. During the War of the Fifth Coalition, there were several more notable uprisings against the French. In 1809, a revolt began in the Veneto region of Italy after Archduke John of Austria called for the people to rise up against the French. Multiple towns came under rebel control, with an uprising in Venice seeing a number of buildings occupied by the rebels. The revolt would not end until November when 4,000 more troops were sent to restore order. Some, however, would escape French capture, continuing to resist in the mountains and marshes. The most famous and successful of the rebellions during the War with the Fifth Coalition was the Tyrolean Rebellion. After the War of the Third Coalition, the county of Tyrol had been taken from Austria and given to one of France's allies, Bavaria. Under Bavarian rule, however, a large number of new rules and restrictions were forced upon the population. Tensions rose steadily, while at the same time, Austria was in the process of preparing for a new war with France. On March 12th and 13th, 1809, young men went into hiding to avoid Bavarian conscription. While in hiding, they communicated with the Austrian court seeking support. Seeing an opportunity to finally strike against the French, Austria cited a breach in the Peace of Pressburg that guaranteed Tyrolean autonomy and declared war on April 9th, 1809. While Austria attacked into Bavaria proper, Tyrol was left mostly on its own to fight Bavarian, French, and Italian forces. Around 80,000 rebels in total would eventually rise up in Tyrol, led by an innkeeper and merchant, Andreas Hofer. Despite Austrian defeats in Bavaria, the rebels managed to defeat Bavarian and French forces in several small battles, forcing them to completely abandon southern Tyrol on the 12th of August. For a brief period of time, the territory under rebel control remained uncontested. However, that would come to an end after the end of the Fifth Coalition in October. With Austrian defeat, the French forces gathered to retake Tyrol. Many of the rebels went home, leaving a small force of diehards to resist the oncoming storm. Over 45,000 troops from France, Bavaria, and the Kingdom of Italy attacked rebel-controlled Tyrol from all sides, finally capturing the territory in early November. Over 12,000 rebels died during the revolt with Hofer also being executed on February 20th, 1810, after being betrayed to the French by one of his men while in hiding. Due to Bavaria's role in allowing the revolt to occur, Napoleon forced Bavaria to give Tyrol to the Kingdom of Italy. A final minor rebellion also occurred shortly after the end of the Fifth Coalition, as French forces occupied the county of Gauchy inside the region of Carnia. The Gauchy were ethnic Germans, who upon the arrival of French troops killed several in multiple different towns, until more French troops were sent to put down the revolt. Most French troops were not actually killed by the Gauchy, with many being handed over to the now neutral Austrians nearby. After rebellion's end, however, French troops out on patrol were still attacked and occasionally killed, many being buried in mounds that the Gauchy apparently took great pride in until World War I, when all ethnic Germans left the area. This video doesn't cover every attempt made on Napoleon's life during his reign, nor does it cover every revolt, rebellion, or uprising that fought against French control in Europe. It does, however, provide a few examples of the more hidden struggle that took place all across Europe and in France itself. Everyone had their own reasons behind why they supported Napoleon or fought against him, but they were all part of a struggle so huge and complex it dwarfs the world wars in its intricacy. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you want to see more videos about the time period, make sure to check out the rest of my channel.